welcome to episode 16 of the Earth Tones Girl podcast. My name is Denise and I'm coming to you today from my home in Yonkers, New York, where I live with my husband and our two children. You can find me on the internet as Earth Tones Girl. I am most active on Instagram, um, though things have been a little crazy, but we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> I am most active on Instagram. You can also find me on Ravelry. Um, the podcast has a Ravelry group, Earth Tones Girl podcast group. And there's lots of people in there chatting about things, and we're going to talk about that in a bit. So I'm, I'm really excited. And we also have an email address, which is earthtonesgirl at gmail.com. That's that's my intro, and I'm a little out of practice. I feel rusty. I haven't done this in four weeks. Oh my gosh. I know I don't have to apologize, but it bothers me so much that I haven't been here in four weeks. But okay, we'll get into that in a second when I do my little recap of where, where have I been. Um, to returning viewers, thank you so very much for joining me today and sticking with me and, and coming back to share some time. And to the, our new view, my new viewers, there are so many new subscribers. I am so excited about that. I, I know I say this all the time. Just bear with me, guys. You could just fast forward for like the next maybe 10, 15 seconds. I'm so happy that people want to spend time with me, that they want to hear what I have to say. I, it just makes me so incredibly happy. So thank you so much for all of the, to all of the new subscribers. Um, I hope you won't be disappointed. There is lots to share. There is so much going on in front of me right now. I wish I could flip the camera and show you all the things that I want to talk about. My notes span two pages. So buckle your seatbelts, get a nice cool drink, and I think we, that we should get started. Before I get into anything, I just want to apologize because I just realized how grainy the screen looked for a minute and I just cleaned my front-facing camera, so that's much better. Um, I may be a little scattered this episode, but uh, I, I promise to get, I'll get back into the swing. So, glancing at my notes, let's just recap a little bit. Um, I think one of the reasons I wanted to apologize was because I... My last episode uh, was just before the Summer Mitten Cal kicked off. It started on June 1st. Uh, my last episode aired on May 23rd, which was just before, the week before. And then I went ghost. Oh my gosh. I mean, I didn't really. I was on Instagram. But things have been so swamped for me. Um, Having two kids in school now is, it's the first year with the two of them in school. There's, I'm a class mom at my son's nursery school, um, because yes, I'm one of those annoying people that like overachiever, wanna be into everything. That's me, I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry, that's just me. <laughs> so I signed on for class mom. I did it for my daughter for the two years that she was there. And it's wonderful, but you know, if you, I feel like if I really want to do it properly, there's a lot to do. So um, there were gifts and things to buy and to wrap and, you know, the end of year party for the children and gifts for the kids. It was just a lot of little things. Is this hard? No, none of it was hard. It was just very time consuming. Um, and you're labeling and it, it was, it was, I had my glue gun out, <laughs> put the needles down, pulled out my glue gun and yeah, it was just... A little bit crazy um so anyway you know what hold on. I just want to oops. I'm sorry about that I had a little technical difficulty there for a second I told you I scattered <laughs> I'm gonna be giggling and laughing a lot this episode because I'm a mess um, but a good mess a good mess because I, I feel like I'm returning to a good place um, I wanted to check the volume just now and realized on the phone if you press the volume button you actually stop recording or you start recording so I apologize for that um, but yeah so there was a lot to do for his school and Chris is very busy at work so I was sort of picking up slack with his errands and um, then I had stuff of my own to do it, it has just been a lot of stuff to do and I, I don't even understand what stuff because now that it's done I look back and I think, well, what did I actually do? And I think what happens, I only have three days 
or three options, three days on which I can podcast. And it's Monday, Wednesday, or Friday when CJ is in school. And it's from basically 9 to 11.30, which is not a lot of time. And there's times when I really needed to get things done during that two and a half hours without him so I could get them done a little quicker. And then I wanted to podcast, but I'm like... <laughs> So the, basically it boils down to do what you have to do before you can do what you want to do. And I try very hard to live by that just in my daily life. Like I try to, you know, tidy. I record in my bedroom and I try very hard to sort of tidy it up before I lay out all of my podcasting stuff because I just don't like a mess. And, you know, I try to clean up the house and tidy and do things before I sit in it. So I was really cutting my time short and that's why I really wasn't able to do this. And... I've been knitting, but not finishing anything. Yeah. It's one of the reasons I don't like to have a lot of projects on the needles at once. Um, the thing is though, I'm loving what I'm working on. So I think part of me also doesn't want to finish them because I'm loving them so much. I know that's so silly, but you're knitters, you understand, you're makers, you get that. Um, there's times when you really want to finish something and other times where you're so enjoying it that you want it to last. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of just stuff and, um, you know, just other family stuff. Not, I was almost going to use the word drama, but just normal family things. I feel like I'm kind of becoming, I don't know if the sandwich generation, I don't know if I'm using that right, but I'm sandwiched. Be, I feel very sandwiched between my family, husband and my two children and taking care of them and my kids are still so young so there's a lot of time that I want to spend with them and time that they need me to be with them and then the other side the other half of the sandwich is my parents um, and there's a lot that my parents are getting older they're fine they're healthy everything is fine but they need me too and um, we're dealing with some stuff I guess just, you know, my aunt passed away last October and she left a will and there's a lot to deal with regarding the will. I'll stop there. Um, and for any of you that have ever dealt with that, it can get very complicated. Everybody is still amiable and great and friendly and everything's fine, but there's a lot of paperwork and a lot of stuff and I'm taking over a lot of that. Um, my sister and I are doing a lot of that together. Um, but the bulk of it still kind of lands in my plate and that's okay. That's by design. That's by choice. And but that's a lot to do too. And, and again, it's trying to fit that all in while my son's in school because he's very, he's great and he's very well behaved, but what three and a half year old really wants to sit at the bank or, you know, sit at the lawyer's office for hours at a time? <laughs> he, no, it doesn't, he, he's, he's good, but he's not that good. Um, so yeah, that's all the family stuff. That's what was so time consuming and all-encompassing and I just had to get through it and I know Tracy um, not Tracy I'm sorry I know Rachel my co-host for the Cal her children are very young as well and she's going through the same end of the school year craziness uh, that I am we, we we live very parallel lives Rachel and I do but <laughs> we we notice it a lot when we post things on Instagram and you know, or don't post on Instagram because we're so consumed with other things. So, um, yeah, we are, we are very, very similar in that way. So, um, I am really, I'm just kind of glancing, glancing at my notes here. Um, I'm just, re I'm thinking that we're pretty much at the end. My daughter is finished school this when today's Monday. Um, this probably won't go up though until Tuesday, tomorrow. Today is Monday the... 18th so this probably won't um, go up because I need to edit and all of that until tomorrow the 19th and there goes my phone hold on one second sorry about that I am recording on my phone on my cell phone um, so I have it in airplane mode right now so I have to keep the house phone handy in case school calls um, and CJ is in camp right now too so that also gives me a little bit of time today um, so anyway what was I saying? I don't know what I was saying. Hmm. Parallel lives, very, very busy. Um, yeah, so that, I think, like I said, oh, end of school for Kira. So yes, when this is going to be published. Okay, I just needed a second. So she is done on Wednesday. 
so like I said I'm I'm recording now and um, probably won't get it up until tomorrow because there is a project that I want to work on I was hoping to have worked on it this weekend but it was Father's Day weekend so Chris got lots and lots of love and attention and we had family over yesterday for a barbecue so I didn't get a chance to get to the sewing machine um, to work on this project but we'll talk about that in just a little bit because I was asked to test sew something for Allison um, who is Daisy Lane Design and I'm really excited about that so we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second um, yeah so oh the other thing that I did during my little hiatus was I substituted for I, I, I substitute taught I was substitute teacher <laughs> I was a substitute teacher for a class back at my old haunt flying fingers yarn shop in Tarrytown I uh, my old boss called me and said that um, the other woman, Tina, that works there, who does the bulk of the classes now, um, had some personal things to take care of and she needed someone to sit in for her class on a Tuesday morning. And I thought, sure. <laughs> really? <laughs> One more thing to add to the list. There's times when, unfortunately, I jump in and say, yes, I'm happy to do that. And then you know, by the time I hang up the phone or, you know, hit send on the text message, I'm, I stop and my schedule goes through my head and I'm like, you dumb dumb, you can't, when are you going to fit that in? <laughs> but I did it. Um, and it was actually fun. It was really fun. It was a Tuesday morning from um, 10 to 12 and I haven't taught a, a real class. I haven't stood in front of actual students in... Oh my gosh, how old is my daughter? In nine plus years, so almost nine and a half years. And it was great, but <laughs> it also reminded me, I think it's challenging. It's definitely challenging. And I really had a good time, but it's a lot to juggle that many people at once in person. Um, I think it's a lot easier. I, I love the format that I've created here with tutorials and um, you know, separate video tutorials or just talking about things within the podcast and then replying to people's messages um, via email or Ravelry or Instagram or wherever. Uh, it's it's a lot easier because you can then kind of go at your own pace um, and answer messages when you can. And I am a little bit behind on messages as well, um, but I will get caught up. By the end of this week, I'm hoping to be caught up and all of that good stuff so just bear with me everybody thank you thank you I know that you all understand um and so yeah that was that was what I did that um, Tuesday and again it was really really wonderful and I kind of missed being in the yarn shop uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be teaching there again it didn't come up because I was sort of rushing then to get out to go on to the next thing um, but you never know I will never say never you never know so that was another thing um, on my plate so that's my recap done talking let's talk knitting so as you all know the summer mitten cal hashtag summer mitten cal I'll put that down here for you is in full swing we are 18 days in it kicked off on June 1st and Rachel and I tried to do a live um, Instagram story together and it's really funny because the evening before we had watched um, Yarn Cafe Creations and Dragon Yarn You know, I'll put that down here too. We had watched them do it um, Do a simultaneous cast the evening before and we thought okay great, you know We can do this no problem and then for some reason we ran into all kinds of glitches um, or I did on my end people couldn't hear me um, Rachel and I couldn't hear each other she couldn't hear me I couldn't hear her. we could see each other and you know the way it worked in the insta story she was above I was below um, because I jumped into her um, live story and then we tried doing it we everybody exited and then we tried going back in with me being the lead and she came in and it just was not working so it ended up where she went first and went through the cal and talked about all the details and rules, not that there are many rules, but she talked about everything. And then um, when she was done, I went in and I did my Insta story. And then of course wanted to save it to the highlights, which is now a feature on Instagram. And guess what? I forgot to do that. 
so it was not there. Um, I am going to do an Insta story about it, just kind of a, you know, middle of the month check-in, and I'll try to save that. And um, so that, so the cow is in full swing. There is a lot of chatter in the Earth Tones Girl podcast Ravelry group. There is also a lot of talk and chatter in Rachel's group, which is the Treehouse Knits um, group on Ravelry. So there's lots of people talking. Um, there's a there are a lot of members of my group. <laughs> Things like that make me so happy. And when you look at the big picture and you say to yourself, does any of this really matter? No, it doesn't. It's just, it just kind of makes you feel good. It's a little bit of validation um, and support of what you do and that feels really good. I mean, if anybody tells you it doesn't, then I think they're lying because it really does feel good. So there's a lot of people in there chatting and it's really fun and I, I jump in and you know, I'm, I was able to help somebody. They had a question about the sweet nectar mitts and or mittens and we'll talk about those in a second I've got mine here and um, so I was able to help her so it's nice everybody's in there chatting and, and supporting each other and, and helping each other and cheering each other on so please come on over and join the group um, we also have a community cork board I sort of borrowed that name from uh, Joanna who is Opera Joe on Instagram and stitching the high notes uh, that's the name of her podcast on YouTube and I borrowed that uh, community cork board feature uh, within my Ravelry group for people to post, you know, if they are makers, if they're creators, bag makers, yarn makers, feel free to go in there and post about your business. Um, if you have coupon codes that you'd like to share with the group, please feel free to do that. If there's any coupon codes that you'd like to share or would like me to share on the podcast episode, I'm also very happy to do that. Um, and we've gotten, we have an actual donation that was, um, a prize donation and that, you know, I'm going to get into that in a second. Um, but I've got it right here to talk about, but I was so excited. They reached out to me on Ravelry and they sent me a message and said they'd like to donate a project bag, um, and a notions pouch slash needle case. It's really a unique design and I can't wait to show you that too. So uh, I've never seen one like that. It's really, really cool. So um, I said, oh my God, thank you so much. So they sent that and then they posted um, on the cork board their, you know, they talked about their business and who they are and they offered a code. So uh, I will put all of that information down here and everything as always that I talk about will be in the show notes in the description box down below. So um, we talked about the thread. There is also now an FO thread that is open. Um, so if you have finished, if you have been an adventurous knitter and you are done <laughs> with your project already, please feel free to post in the FO thread that it's no chatter in that. We're just posting finished, um, your finished objects in there um, with the name of what the, your pattern is. So, and I'm actually going to be pulling from, I don't even think there's any finished objects yet, um, but for June, I just wanted to talk to about prizes and how that's going to work. Um, Rachel and I were talking about that and I think what we're going to do is pull from the chatter thread. Um, if they're finished objects, I'll include those, but I think right now we're going to pull from the chatter thread, um, a prize winner from there at the end of June. And then I'm going to do another, um, donate, give another prize at the end of July. Uh, and then there'll be another prize awarded at the end of July because the Cal runs from June 1st to July 31st and then there'll be another prize at the end um, which will be the grand prize at the end uh, and if you've knit two or more mittens if you can get in a pair of mittens a month um, that makes you eligible for the grand prize and again I'm not totally sticking with that so but there will be a grand prize um, and I'm really excited about it so I think we should talk Prizes. Let me go grab them. They're right in front of me, but I know I'm going to knock the camera over if I reach over, so I'll be back in one second. Okay, here I am. Um, so let's talk prizes, you guys. I am so excited about this. Uh, I hope that you all like them. So I think this may be a little incentive for people to keep stitching, keep making your mittens, and I hope that you're enjoying it. Um, what I'm finding in the chatter thread is there are a lot of new mitten knitters, which is really fun. I I always 
support people and really want to push people to try techniques and patterns and things that they've not done before just to you know have some more tricks and tips in your bag uh, I think it's I think it's fun to step out of your comfort zone um, I have done that a lot especially since starting this podcast um, it's funny there's so much I want to share and talk about um, in this episode and I'm, I'm gonna try to save some of it for later but I was on Instagram this week going down the rabbit hole as we all know Instagram is and I'm not gonna remember names or who the which whose feed it was on but the theme was um, they were talking about how many knitters are introverted um, or introverts and we like quiet we find talking to making small talk and being in crowds and things like that to be very exhausting and almost a little nerve-wracking um, I am very I can be both I can be very introverted and there's times when I need to be introverted because not both I am introverted and I'll explain what I mean in a sec uh, I need quiet I need to be quiet I like to be quiet I love to be quiet and that's not always possible in my own day-to-day -day life with my family um, and that's fine that's great that's the way it is but I then retreat I need to retreat and I do tend to stay up late at night as I've said before and as you've seen on my insta stories um, I do tend to stay up late at night because everybody's asleep the house is quiet and I have all of this space to myself I've got this quiet to myself and it's almost like the quiet becomes this very comfortable silent companion for me and I love it I love it the quiet is just there I'm talking about it like it's a person but you don't have to talk you don't have to answer it's like a comfortable silence with your partner then where you know you don't have to talk and that's okay and I need that to recharge myself uh, after going to Yarny events whether it's Rhinebeck or Sheep and Wool Festival or um, Rhinebeck or sorry whether you're going to Rhinebeck or Vogue Knitting Live or to Maryland Sheep and Wool um, I love it and that's where the extrovert comes out I I love meeting people um, and especially having this podcast I'm recognized a little bit more so I love meeting viewers I love talking to people what are you working on do you have questions for me I'm happy to answer them I'm happy to answer them online in person um, hugs and pictures and all of that I, I think it's absolutely wonderful and I love doing it but then the minute it's over the events over or I get back in the car now to go home or I'm back at the hotel to check to just you know relax for a bit before dinner <laughs> it's I literally feel myself kind of crash I feel like I've taken this giant backpack off and I can put it down um, and it's just I can feel really exhausted from the interaction and um, I'm not even sure why I'm talking about this but um, I my mind is in 20 directions today but just that I, I think I think I just wanted to say that um, that's another reason probably for my silence I need then because I'm so busy and active during the day I still needed that quiet um, but yeah okay so anyway again I don't know where that just came from but it, it just did but let's talk prizes I'm so sorry you guys <laughs> wow I'm a mess today <laughs> uh, but let's talk prizes um, my notes are kind of buried so for as we were saying as I was saying there's gonna be a June prize a July prize and then a grand prize at the end so the June prize is is everybody ready let's make this look nice and neat a matter root project bag and you're going to get a copy this is the ebook um, mittens from the fairy forest which is the ebook and English uh, translation to the Eventer Vater book that Patricia who is P4 Chen on Instagram and Knitography on YouTube this is the book uh, this comes from the book that she was then selling and promoting on her podcast so this these together are going to be um, the June prize and this bag I don't want to open it uh, I just want to keep it in the packaging I mean it's not a lot of packaging and I could probably do it but I just want to keep it neat but this size looks like hold on, it looks like this so it's this, whoops, 
there's a project in here and we'll talk about that in a sec but this is the size of the bag so you can you roll it down um, and then it clips into place like this so that is how the bag works and you can hang it on your arm um, and you can walk and knit but this is the size of the bag which I just dropped hang on okay I got it <laughs> so again I just didn't want to open it I'd like to keep it neat so and the design on it if you can see there are knit stitches so I believe that half the bag so you've got this beautiful indigo blue and then that's at the top and then the bottom half of the bag is, are these knit stitches which are just it's the fabric is gorgeous I love these bags so much it's such a simple design it just rolls down and I literally I love that it's it's canvassy more like a, maybe a, even a cotton twill, but there's two pieces of fabric. So it's very sturdy, but soft at the same time. And I know with my project bag, I just stuff it in my backpack. My needles don't poke through it. Um, it's, I love it. I love it so much. So you're getting, so here are your prizes, guys. These are the June prizes. So excited. I hope you're excited. I hope this motivates you to keep knitting. So that is for June. And let's keep going. I Now, here is the amazing donation. Um, and this is from a single strand studio. This is from Carol from a single strand studio. Again, she reached out to me and asked if she could uh, submit a donation. And I was so excited because I feel like, and again, I think I've said this before too, I feel like that makes you almost feel official kind of. <laughs> People like what I'm doing and that really makes me happy and they want to be a part of it. So thank you all so much. And if anybody else out there uh, would like to donate, um, whether it's yarn or a project bag, you know, please, please reach out and, and we'll talk and I think it'll be great. Just come talk to me. I love that. So here, are you ready for this? This bag is so gorgeous and wait until you see the fabric. you guys oh my god it is a movie night themed project bag I apologize for crinkling I know some of you like it and or don't mind it and others hate it so I will try to keep it to a minimum it is a drawstring bag here's the little drawstring here it has this beautiful um, handle like a cotton a woven cotton handle so you can hold it on your arm and knit as you go and it has it comes with a little progress keeper right there and that I don't think it's going to show up but it says New Hampshire I believe on it yep it's the state of New Hampshire which is where um a single a single strand studio is located she has her label which is beautiful and the sticker it's just gorgeous and also she's also included this gorgeous notions pouch slash needle holder with a little um there's a little loop here, so I believe you can hang it maybe from the inside of the bag. I didn't open it, so I, I really I want to keep the packaging intact. I didn't I really don't want to open it and ruin it. Um, but it's so cute. Now, Carol, thank you so very much for this donation. It is unbelievable, and she went above and beyond. So this is going to be the July prize. I'm so excited about that. And all of these prizes, you guys, are going to come with little extras. Wink, wink. Um, I won't say what those are. It may be yarn. It may be markers. It may be another little, maybe notions pouch. Obviously, I'm not going to send that with this, but there may be some yarn with this one. I don't know. Um, stay tuned. But it's, I can't show you everything. I've got to leave some stuff for surprises. Everybody loves a surprise. And there's not enough of them in life anymore. So, yeah. I love packaging up gifts for people. I absolutely love love it I love putting in all the little details so there's definitely going to be more coming with this um, as well as the June prize so this prize again this is for July and what Carol did which I thought was so incredibly thoughtful it really blew me away and when people are really thoughtful and pay attention to to things and come up with gifts it's just I, I was just really blown away by the thoughtfulness of this so along with that gorgeous project bag was this little bag and this was a gift for me um, just as a thank you as a little I like your podcast kind of present and I just I was so touched by this and aside from the fact that I was touched by the gift in general I was doubly touched by 
what she made. Now, here we go. There's a, there's a lot in this bag. And there was a beautiful little note that she included. That's right here. I'm going to keep that to myself. And um, But what she has here in the bag, she included, of course, some tea. And then she put a little hole in the tea with a little progress keeper. Let me put my hand to the back. That is a teacup. Let me stop that from moving. I mean, you guys, how cute is that? How cute is that? I think this is going to be in every gift package that I do from now on. I, look at that. You get a teacup with your tea. Oh my gosh, organic peachy green tea. I thought this was adorable. So we had that and here is another little New Hampshire. Can you see that? Another little New Hampshire key ring and there's a little rose that goes with it. Oh, I wish I had a phone that did auto focus. Joanna, I'm so jealous. <laughs> um, so if you're watching, I really want your phone. Okay, anyway, um, so here's my little progress keeper, New Hampshire, and there's a little rose. Can you see the rose? Let me see if you can see the little rose there. It's so beautiful, so I have that also. And here is the pouch, you guys. Now, this is called, oh dear, you know what? I'm gonna put that right down here. But basically, what you have, you have these snaps here on the side and a little D-ring to hold it. And what you do is you pop this open. Here it is, it opens up. You can then put your needles, you can tuck your needles in here. This section is for DPNs on this side here, two, two rows or two sections for DPNs. You've got all of the little lines for them. And then on this side, you've got a pocket for notions and then two larger pockets right up here. There we go. Two larger pockets for more notions. You can add, hang your stitch markers or progress keepers from this perfectly, very strategically placed little loop here. I love that. Then you fold your flap down, you close it, and you snap it all back into place. Hold on, let me get that last snap. It's not snapping, <laughs> but it'll snap. Um, but look at that, you guys. Is this not an incredibly unique design? I just think this is amazing. And the best part, does this look familiar? Maybe? Does that fabric look familiar? Carol saw and remembered that I bought a project bag from Amy Beth, who's the Fat Squirrel Speaks. I bought that in Maryland, and it was this bag. So my friend Carol made me a little notions pouch to match it. Right, I'm speechless too. Oh my God, I mean, can you say thoughtful boys and girls I, it I don't think it gets more I mean look at this look look at it it matches perfect and I love this fabric so much it is so Harry Potter I'm a gigantic Harry Potter fan I don't necessarily always wear it on my sleeve but I'm I am an amazing Harry Potter fan um very dedicated I am a Hufflepuff a proud Hufflepuff there I've said it um I've got some little um Little pops up there, total pop keychains. I had Harry and Dobby and Dumbledore. So yes, I'm I'm a Harry Potter fan. So I that's why I love this bag so much because it wasn't an in-your-face Harry Potter bag. It was very, very subtle, and the real true fans will know what all of these little symbols mean. And now to have a little pouch that goes with it. And it fits right inside. It is not, it's wide, but it's very, very flat and neat. Fits perfectly now in my bag. There's plenty of space for my project. I couldn't be happier. So Carol, thank you so very much. I really don't have words for how touched I was by this. And my little progress keepers and my tea. So thank you so very much for this. I'm going to tuck everything in to the bag right now <laughs> and leave it there. Um, and she also included, I love these little, um, like chiffon gift bags too. So I will be holding on to this, maybe reuse it, I don't know. But she says, thank you, Denise, on the little tag. Thank you, Carol, because I love it so very much. So I'm gonna put that here. And let's continue with the grand prize, which is sitting right here. The grand prize is, are you ready, guys? I'm giving away this book. 
I know I said that this was going to be a prize, but I've decided to keep this as the grand prize. This book is Mittens from Norway, and it is by Nina Granlund Sathir. Sathir? I'm, I'm sorry. It's a Norwegian last name, and I know I'm going to try to mess it up. And along with that is some Norwegian yarn. Here is Roma Finelgarn in um, a beautiful cream and black. Very simple, basic colors to go along with the book. I hope that you guys like that. <laughs> it just seemed very appropriate. Um, since I'm also, I'm very obsessed with Norwegian mittens and have really been loving them. I love this yarn, as you know, and I just thought, you know what? I, I think I need to give away a copy of this book and some yarn. So this is the grand prize, everybody. Very excited about that. Let's just look at that one more time because this book is so gorgeous. And I think that Rachel did these mittens on the cover. I think they're the rose mittens. I could be wrong, but I'm almost positive that she knit these. I'll check later and I'll put that down here, but I think she did. So here's the grand prize. And those are prizes, you guys. I am so excited about that. I hope you guys are excited. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else regarding the cow. Um, keep posting. A lot of people are using the hashtag, um, which is the Summer Mitten Cal, and I'll put that down here for you. So keep using the hashtag. Keep sharing your progress. If you have questions, please feel free to post in my group, post in Rachel's. It doesn't matter that much. The point is for you to get the help that you need if you need some help with your patterns. Um, yeah, I'm really, really excited so we're gonna talk about my mittens in just a little bit um, and I will be right back I'm back so guess what <clears throat> I have no FOs for you this week um I have a hoe I do have a hoe um I have a couple of hoes, I have two, but I don't have any finished objects and that's okay. Uh, I used to beat myself up about, you know, have, I needed to have a finished object for every single podcast. Um, and in light of life being so full these last couple of weeks, that just didn't happen. But um, I do have some whips and a hoe, so we'll talk about those in a bit. Uh, one idea I wanted to throw out there um, while it's in my mind and I'm, I'm thinking clearly, at least for this moment, is there's a couple of people on Instagram, and I just want your opinion on this. I'm not going into a lot of detail right now. I just want your opinion. There are a few people on Instagram. I know uh, Mina Phillip, who's the knitting expat, and she's doing it or just finished one up. And I know that Chelsea from Legacy Fiber Arts, I know she was doing it as well. They're doing a de-stash or they're de-stashing on Instagram. And... I've been trying to think of how to de-stash because I have a lot of yarn and fabric, a lot of fat quarters and things like that that I know I'm not going to use. Why, you ask? Because taste change, my taste change. And I think that is true for many makers. What you may have loved even a year ago, two years ago, just may not suit your palette and where you are now and that's all okay and rather than having the yarn just sit there in you know a bin or a drawer just for the sake of having a big stash and I don't like having a big stash I mean my stash is pretty large but um, the bulk of it is sock yarn um, I mean that's the tip of the iceberg up there uh, but the stuff that I know I'm not gonna use or again my taste have changed or I've it, it's just not getting me excited anymore I'd rather send it on to a good home then have it just sitting there languishing. Um, everything is stored, you know, really well. I mean, it's it's smoke free, pet hair free, all of that stuff. Um, but I was thinking about how to de-stash it, and I really like the idea of doing it on Instagram. I was going to set up an entire de-stash page, but I know that they've done it. Um, Mina and Chelsea have done it via Instagram stories, Insta story. And they, they've got some rules, they've got some stuff, they let you know ahead of time, and then they put up what they're selling, and it's basically a first come first serve. So I'm trying to figure out what I'd like to find out from you all, and please let me know, leave a comment down below for me. What do you think of that? Do you like that idea? Would you be interested in that? Would, do you like the idea of a separate 
DStash page or just doing it on InstaStory. Um, just let me know what you think. I'm really curious because I really want to purge a lot of stuff. Um, and I've got really beautiful stuff like Lorna's laces. I have um, some Jitterbugs, some Lorna's laces. I have Felici that's beautiful. I'm just not in love with the colors anymore. I, I have other Felici colors. So um, let me know what you think. And I'm probably going to do that one way or another. However it happens, it's probably going to happen in July. Uh, I'm thinking probably the beginning of July in the first two weeks or so. Um, kids are done. Things have slowed down. Um, and then I can just package everything up, get it all sent out. Yeah. So let me know what you think about that. So I just wanted to throw that out there and ask for opinions. And like I said, I don't have any finished objects this week, but I do have some works in progress. So let's talk about those. Let's go. Um, now what I have sort of completed, I've gotten the bulk of the knitting done on my sweet nectar mitts. And this pattern is by Tannis Lavelle, 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 uh, who is Tannis Fiber Arts and sweet nectar mitts. And I'm loving them. I love them. And I've gotten all of the knitting, most of the knitting done. You know what? Why is talk? Let me show you. Here they are, you guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at that. These are not blocked. They are not finished. Uh, as you can see, they still need thumbs and they also need a lining. Um, these are going to be the warmest mittens I have ever owned. So I just have to, it's sock yarn that's used for the lining. I just haven't gotten there yet, but I think I know what I'm going to use. I was going to use mohair. Um, that's from, now let's talk about the yarn. This yarn is Legacy Fiber. Again, the pattern is the Sweet Nectar Mitts. And the yarn that I'm using, guys, I cannot talk about this yarn anymore. It, I love it. I can't sing its praises more than I already have. But then again, yes, I can. That's what I'm trying to say. It's so incredible. This yarn is, it is soft. It's warm. It is amazing. The way the stitch definition, let me just turn these over so you can see. I mean, look at that. The stitch definition in these is just incredible. What is that? That's not a mistake, is it? Is that a mistake? Oh, crud. It may be a mistake. I'm gonna leave it. Let's just, let's turn them around. <laughs> let's turn them around to the pretty side. Or you know what? As as someone suggested when I did this before, I can just duplicate, sti duplicate stitch over that. So I'm really not gonna worry about it. Um, but here they are again. The yarn is by Legacy Fiber Arts. I will put that down here for you. By Legacy Fiber Arts, it is a mitten, a DK weight mitten kit. This color combination, um, the background color is silver lining and this gorgeous gorgeous tonal red look at that oh my god this tonal red is hot tomato and tomato has an e on the end <laughs> and i think that um sue named it after a restaurant in connecticut where she lives sue if you're watching am i right i think so um i try very hard to remember everything you say <laughs> so so here they are and i wanted to just show you too this has a Gorgeous pico edge, absolutely beautiful pico edge on it. Can you see that? And what you do, it's done with decreases and yarn overs. And then the pattern instructs you to then stitch down all the way around, just stitch that cuff down. So on this mitten, I have not done that yet. It's right here. Now, I know that when Sue did it, Sue from Legacy Fiber Arts, I know when she did it, she knit it in as she went along. So as she's going along, when she got to, so you're starting from the bottom, you're working your way up. So when she got to the same number of rows up here, she just turned it under and knit it in as she went along. And I thought to do that, um, but I had already done it this way on this mitten. So I just thought I, just to be consistent. Uh, but I just wanted to then show you um, then that what I'm going to do then is just stitch this down and it's very very easy to do you have to do it carefully but basically you're almost kind of matching up um, stitch for stitch and you go around and it's just flaring a little bit again because it hasn't been blocked but that will lay flat once it's been blocked but there it is look at that you guys wait let's turn this around 
goes this way, this way, this way. <laughs> because my little hummingbird is drinking from the flower. Oh my gosh, I just love this so very much. And again, these do need to be blocked because part of his little beak here is getting lost. Because again, the stitches, it just needs to be blocked. Um, but here they are. So I am almost done. They are my little progress keepers that I made. So we have a little hibiscus. This one came from Barbados. Actually, they both did uh, from a little bead shop that I found in, across the street from our hotel when we were there last summer. So there they are. Oh my, and that hibiscus, it's perfect. I mean, the hibiscus matches, the little hummingbird matches so perfectly. I love these so much. They were just a joy and there is so much yarn left. Let's talk about that. You have enough yarn here to show you how amazing Legacy Fiber Arts is. I, I kind of have a special place in my heart for them. <laughs> um, look at how much yarn is left, you guys. You have enough yarn, and I know Rachel had talked about this already, you have enough yarn here for another pair of mittens. How amazing is that? There is a little bit less because this was, there is a lot of the red in here that was used. You can either flip these around if you wanted to on another pattern, or you can do a mitt that, you know, just like a, a hand warmer style, but you definitely have enough to knit another pair of mittens. It's yarn is just incredible. Um, I'll tell you again, it's a DK weight, and I'll tell you how many yards. It's a 100 gram ball, and it's a 75-25 DK, so that means 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon, and it is 245 yards in a skein. So that is what you've got here. I'm gonna tuck this in, because that is where I store um, my labels so I can be organized and know what I'm doing. So again, silver lining, it's not, well, it's blowing out a little bit. Let me put it on this side. Yeah, there you go. It's still blowing out a little from the light. My window is right here, so that's why it's blowing out a bit. Silver lining, hot tomato, it's just, Amazing yarn. Oh my goodness. So that, um, those are my mitts. Um, yeah, and I am going to, oh, this is what I started to say. Legacy Fiber Arts has an incredible, incredible mohair. Um, I'm just holding these up because I don't know about you, but I just could stare at these all day long. I love them. Knitting is a magic trick to me, and I know I've said this too, but how do you not get excited when you have just created these? Oh my God, you knit these up. Yes, it's it's an amazing pattern. And you follow the pattern and look, you can have these gorgeous mittens. Oh my God. Okay, let's just try this on here for a sec. So here we go. Here's my other one. Turn that around. Beautiful, aren't they beautiful? Oh my gosh. I don't have any words for how gorgeous these are. I can't wait to finish these thumbs. See, and now that I have it on, you can't even see where that little flub is. Can you see it? Can you see it? No, you can't. So there, I'm not gonna worry about it. And there's a beautiful little heart on the top. What I did here, if you can, if you can see, I made a tiny little mistake in here and I saw it early enough. I didn't wanna rip all the way out. There's, you see the little heart there at the top? I didn't wanna rip out, so I actually dropped down, took that stitch off the needle, dropped it down, and then picked up the right color. Cause I think I had picked up a white and I should've, or the not the white, the silver lining, um, the grayish color, and I needed to pick up the red. So I just dropped down. This floats are running right there, so they're waiting to be used. And that's exactly what I did. So I picked up the right strand and finished them off. And the tips of these, if you can see, are grafted. Let's turn them this way. So you're kitchenering the top closed. You, um, other mittens that I've done, you sort of knit down to maybe eight stitches and then you pull the yarn through. But with these, you're actually, it's a little bit wider on the top, so you're grafting the stitches together. And I think it's eight, it's 16 stitches all together. Eight on one, eight on the front, eight on the back. But here they are. <laughs> love them, love them, love them. So here are my mittens. Um, obviously I am not, I'm taking them off. I don't want to, but I'll take them off because it's about 95 degrees in New York today. It is the hottest day so far for the year and I'm wearing mittens. 
but that's because my air conditioning's on. Yay for air conditioning. Uh, I even have to weave in my ends. I kind of strategically tuck those inside so you couldn't see them. I'm going to put them right back. And yeah, so I just have to finish these off. I Oh, I was saying about the mohair. Um, I love the idea of mohair, but I don't actually like the way it feels on my skin that much. So I was going to use the Legacy Fiber Arts mohair, and the colors are stunning, you guys. Absolutely stunning. It's a fingering weight mohair. I, I strongly suggest that you go over and have a look at it. The colors are just incredible. And I know that Sue was lining her pair of mittens with the mohair. So is it a mohair silk? I think it's just mohair, but I'm going to use just a fingering weight. Um, I've got lots of solid fingering weight yarn, solid colors. So I'm just going to do that um, to finish these off and I can't wait to finish my thumb. So these will be finished very, very shortly. Um, I may briefly show them to you again, just so you can see the lining and how that works. So we may be seeing these one more time. So that is that project. And uh, I also used, so I talked about the pattern, I talked about the yarn, and I can't, could not find my size threes. Pretty much all of my needles, except for my sock needles, are Addy Turbos. Um, yeah, because I bought them really early in my knitting career, and it was really the only needles that I only circular needles that I was ever offered when I went into a shop. So that's what I used. I learned about other needles later as I've talked about um, in other episodes, but I could not find my threes. I don't know if they're tucked in a, a project that's been, that's tucked behind something else and hiding right now, but I couldn't find them. So I actually used, um, I got these from Nitty City in Manhattan and these are Chowgu's, um, Chowgu three. So it's 24 inches. Of course I did them two circulars, oh, I'm a little tangled. I did them two circular and they are 3.25, I think is the size um, of a three. Let's just double check that. Is that written on here? Uh, it's not on here, but I think the size is um, 3.25 for a size three. Um, and that's the size I knit these on. So Yep, that's what I did. Even my needle, I mean, I just love it. Even the needle matched, the cord matched the, the project. <laughs> that wasn't planned at all. But these needles were really smooth. I wasn't liking them at first because there's a tiny bit of drag on the needle. And what that means is you don't feel it at all, but the needle is abraded. Is that the right word? in a way so that if you're doing lace or anything like that, your stitches don't slip as much as they would on a regular metal needle. And at first I, I was a little hesitant because there was that little bit of drag, but after a while I didn't even notice it and I absolutely loved them. So here are my threes and I've since acquired a set of Addy Rockets in the size threes, but I'm so happy to have these as well. So let's keep going on to my other whip. Hello, I'm back again with whip number two. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Look at that. Look at that. Can you talk about, have you ever come across a pattern that as soon as you saw it, you had to drop absolutely everything that you were doing and cast it on immediately? Well, this is that project. I mean... Oh my gosh, just look at that. This is called the Underwing Mittens. I'm gonna find the first page here for you. Here's the pattern. It is by Erica Hoser Designs, and it is the Underwing Mitts. And she does this incredible duplicate stitch in here for the tail of the butterflies Wait, is it a butterfly? It's a moth. It is the underwing, it's a moth. And there's this gorgeous little color, this pop of color in the bottom or the bottom of the wing. I haven't done that. I haven't put that on mine yet. I actually love it just as it is, but I am going to put in, um, I'm gonna color this duplicate stitch this all in. And I think I am gonna do it in the orange as well. So much. This pattern was so fast. I knit this up in just a couple of days. It was so quick. It was the perfect pairing of pattern and yarn. I did this in Malabrigo sock. 
I don't think it's going to show up that well here, but it is a gorgeous tonal brown with my usual, this is my go-to cream color from Malabrigo Sock that I use for heel cuffs, heels, and toes on my socks. It is in the natural colorway, so the cream is natural, that's the name of the colorway, and the brown is called Cordovan. Oh my god, let's put this on, shall we? I love this so very much. And here, I haven't woven in my ends. <laughs> I'm terrible at that sometimes. Let's see if I can tuck that in and make it look, hold on a second, I'm tucking, 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 making it look neat. All right, I can't tuck but so much, okay. But anyway, here it is, of course it's sticking up, but there it is, and my watch is in the way. Let's pop off my watch for a second. Take off the Fitbit. I'm sitting anyway, so nothing's counting. But look at that, you guys. Isn't that incredible? Sorry, I'm still trying to tuck in the ends here. <laughs> it's so distracting, I know it's annoying. But look, gorgeous, just gorgeous. The fit is amazing. It's so comfortable. I just wanted, and I wanted to do a pair of color work hand warmers. I wanted something that was a little bit smaller. I do question, though, I love Erica's designs, absolutely love them, but I do question putting a moth sworn enemy of yarn and knitters everywhere on the mitten. Just saying. It's just a thought in my head as I was knitting. <laughs> Erica's probably gonna just, if she's watching, Erica, if you're watching, I was just wondering. I know it's a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern, um, but I was just wondering about that. And I love the phases of the moon that's across the bottom. I mean, look at that. Oh, it's just, it's incredible. It's an absolutely incredible, pattern and you know what it's quick it's really 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 quick and we have so many moths are flying around our house at night um again i know i'm not eligible for any of the prizes for the the summer mitten cow but as one of the hosts i thought you know i've, I've got to be knitting here i should i should be showing you things and these scream summer to me they really do it's it's being outside in the on a summer evening and you're you're looking up at the moon you have the moths and the bugs just kind of flying around the light bulbs or whatever you you're sitting outside with i love it i just love it i can't wait to knit the other one um i actually started to cast on the other one but then i had to stop and i'll tell you why in a second because i only had one ball of this cream color and I started to work on a pair of socks and I needed to do the heels. So I paused, did the heels, and now I'm gonna finish this mitten because it's just amazing. It's amazing. Look at that. Oh, I can't, I can't say, I could talk about this all day. I'm not using that expression right. That's the second time I've messed that up, so I'm sorry, you guys. Um, I love it. I just love it. I love, look at that thumb detail. It's just amazing. Let's look at it from this side. Ugh, oh, love it. It's beautiful. It's absolutely that seed sort of effect that you get with the, with the color work. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So these are the underwing mitts. If you're looking for, if you want to do the summer mitten cal and you're looking for a pattern that may not be as involved as a full mitten, See, you're going just a little more than half. So if you wanted something and then you don't have to worry about, you know, doing more stitches for the thumb or working on a, such a tight circumference. Um, I mean, this was a little bit tight in here, not tight, but you're working on a smaller circumference. But if you don't want to do that for a long period and you still want to do color work, this is a great, great pattern. Um, another pattern I had talked about in the last podcast was the Wishmaker mitts and I did a deep stash dive. <laughs> I'll talk about those later because I do want to cast those on. Those remind me so much of my children um, and how both of them still, my daughter still, they love to pick the dandelions and blow the seeds all over. I mean, my neighbors don't appreciate it with their lawns. Sorry. I'll talk about that. Um, but I love how excited they get. So yes, I'm going to also be casting those on. So my goal, my personal goal is to have three pairs of mittens, maybe more, but at a minimum of three pairs of mittens for the summer mitten cow that I'm working on. Um, I know Rachel has finished her sweet nectar mitts uh, a while ago. I think she even finished them before the cow started. Um, 
but I'm very happy with my progress. I really am. The fact that I've even gotten this much knitting done, considering how busy life has been, has made me very, very happy. Um, so I've got one more whip to show you, and then I will talk about my test sew project, and I think we may be done, but I'll be right back. I don't know who I was kidding. I do have a couple more things to talk to you about, but that's okay. This episode may be a little bit longer, and that's okay. <laughs> you don't have to watch this all in one sitting. Um, there's many podcasts, um, and I'm going to talk about podcasts. That's one of the things I want to talk about in a second. Um, I know that I watch quite a few podcasts, and I watch them in pieces. Uh, I love when they're long. It's just more time to visit with friends and to visit with knitters. Um, but I know that it can feel a little daunting sometimes because, again, everybody's time is limited, especially now that the weather is so beautiful and you're outside. You just want to be outside and not glued to your phone. You want to look up at the blue sky or look at the ocean or wherever you are. Um, so, yes, I tend to watch podcasts in segments, but we'll talk about podcasts more in a second. Let me show you my other whip. Look at these, you guys. Woohoo! Not only is it socks, but it's two socks on two circular needles at the same time. Look at that. And this yarn, is this yarn not amazing? I mean, let's just keep turning these for a second. This is, I have quite a few of quite a few skeins of mustache yarn in my stash but it's this is the first time I've actually cast on with it I'm also a Star Wars fan I am a big geek let's just let me just say that right now I am a geek I'm gonna wave my geek flag right now I love science fiction I love fantasy Harry Potter Star Wars Star Trek um, you name it I'm a Walking Dead fan um, love it love it all my newest and most recent obsession I'm I know I'm digressing but my most recent obsession and I don't think I've talked about it is The Handmaid's Tale is anybody watching that has anybody read the book I read the book in college rocked my world completely rocked my world and you're talking that was a lot of years ago um a very long time ago but I cut class for two days and read the book it was that good and Hulu now has a series dare I say the series is better than the book that has never happened in all of my watching I mean I think the closest Lord of the Rings did an incredible job with translation um, from book to the screen but oh my gosh yeah I love Lord of the Rings too I'm a hobbit my husband calls me a hobbit when it's mealtime breakfast first breakfast second breakfast elevensies lunch afternoon tea dinner supper I think I covered them all that's how I eat throughout the day Okay, anyway, back to Mitten, back to other things. Um, so yes, Hulu, amazing. It's The Handmaid's Tale on Hulu. If you're not watching it, stop watching this and go watch that and then come back and watch this and leave me a comment about how much you love it because I love it. <laughs> I even have yarn with a Handmaid's Tale theme, but we'll talk about that in another episode. So let's get back to these. Oh my gosh, so this has been my knitting while watching the Handmaid's Tale, and I have not shown two at a time socks on this podcast yet. So I was rushing to try to finish these last night. I don't have that much more to go. I was rushing to try to finish them, and then I thought, you know what? No, slow down. Let's talk about it on the podcast. So this is why I stopped because I wanted to do, I was trying to figure out, and for those of you who've been watching for a while, you know I can be a little obsessive about matching my stripes and where to put the heel in and all of that. I didn't want to do an afterthought heel just because I didn't. I didn't really feel like doing that this time. Um, and I've also not knit with stripes that were in segments like this. So I thought, or I have, but not to this degree, not this dramatic. And I was just struggling. This is my biggest problem in life. I'm doing pretty good. I was struggling to figure out where to put the heel in so as you can see there's this wide white section in here and I thought you know what just break it up put this stripe in here to fall right at the base of the instep so right at your ankle and then put this yarn this is my Malabrigo my go-to Malabrigo sock matches perfectly again I'm sorry you guys it's blowing out so much because of the light today it's so bright out but let me see if I put it over here. Yeah, that's better. Um, 
it matched almost perfectly. You can see a tiny little demarcation there because it's a little whiter in the, the white from the yarn itself is a little bit whiter than the Malabrigo sock, but it works for me. It absolutely works. I love, love, love it. Um, but yeah, here are two at a time socks and there are many tutorials out there on how to do this. Um, I, someone has asked me, uh, I've gotten a request to do a two at a time on two cert tutorial. And I honestly thought that Mina Phillip had done one, the knitting expat, but she did, she definitely showed how to manage your yarn with two at a time socks, but she was using magic loop. Um, again, it, the management is the same. I'm just untwisting this for a second. The management is the same. I've got my yarn. This is the project bag. This is my matter root main bag. I've got the two skeins in there and I just kind of rotate the bag. If I'll link Mina's tutorial down below for you so you can see how she turns the bag and how she manages the yarn so things don't get tangled. Um, but I, I think I'm going to do, and it really won't be that long, I think I will do a really brief um, tutorial on how to do the two at a time socks on two circulars. Uh, I think that would be a good thing. And I've got my gorgeous, no, let, I buck back to mustache yarn for a sec. So mustache yarn, the beauty of mustache yarn is they send you two perfectly matched skeins so that you can cast on your socks and get them to match perfectly. So you get two, I guess 50 grams, it's 100 grams altogether and you get two perfectly matched 50 gram skeins. You cast on in exactly the same spot. I think they even help you with that. And there you go, they match perfectly. You know how happy that's making me. You know I can get crazy when things don't match. <laughs> um, it's, I love these so much. And this colorway, again, back to my geek flag, this colorway is the Han colorway. Han Solo, it's, they, mustache yarn's calling it Han. Um, but this is the Han Solo colorway. Uh, and I ordered this right in time for the movie, which I haven't seen yet. It just hasn't been time and honestly I go to the movie sometimes in the evening alone and by the time I get the kids into bed and finish cleaning up the kitchen whatever I'm so tired <laughs> I can I barely have the energy to get down the hall to go to bed so um yeah but I haven't seen it yet I know I know I know I'm going to go see it uh, but this colorway is my Star Wars mustache yarn there's so many things. It, it couldn't be more perfect. I just love this so much. And I could not find a Star Wars themed charm to make a progress keeper for myself. I, I mean, there were a few out there, but I mean, they're from Pandora and from various jewelry stores and they cost a small fortune. Oh my God. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I went to a new little toy store the other day because there are not many of them left, but I did go to a toy store the other day and I found this. It's it's from a line of charms called Charm It. Have you guys seen those? I think I might have the tag in here some. Yep, this is the company. It's called um, Charm It. Uh, I can't see because I'm an old lady. Oh, it's charm-it.com. Um, and I went into the toy store and they happened to have this sitting there. It's actually got an earring, almost like an old fashioned earring closure on the top, which I'm going to change out. Um, it's working, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of it. It's a little more fiddly to open and close. Uh, but it is a little snow cone, which my son is completely obsessed with right now. And it's got a little smiley face. Again, I don't know if you can see it, but it has a little smiley face on the cone, but it's so I mean, look at that. And it looks like the ice, it's kind of, can you hear that? It's kind of crunchy, just the way the snow, a snow cone would be. I love it, I love it. So that's keeping me company. I'm almost finished with these. Um, and again, I will do a tutorial on two at a time socks on two cirques. I don't know when that's gonna happen. I'm not even going to try to plan it right now, but it will happen at some point. So this is my other whip. These will be finished very, very soon. They're in my Matter Root main bag, and there you go. <sighs> that is it for projects right now. Um, 
yeah, I think I've covered everything. Um, like I said, school is finished. I'm hoping to get a little bit more knitting done and get back into a groove. I don't know when I will podcast again after this because again, the kids will be on vacation now, summer vacation. Um, but we may be able, I'll see what I can do because my in-laws live two blocks that way. <laughs> so we'll see. Maybe once every week or every week and a half, they can go over there and hang out and play for a little bit and then we'll figure out um, the next episode. But uh, what else? I've got one or two more things to talk about, so I will be back in one second. So one of the reasons um, that this podcast may not be... Um, published and edited until tomorrow is because I was asked to test sew a project bag for Allison, Allison Williams of Daisy Lane Design. And this is the bag. It is her beachcomber bag. It is an adorable design. It's got this gorgeous round bottom. So it sits perfectly like a little bucket or a little, I would almost say like a bucket type style bag gorgeous drawstring. I've read through the pattern. It is a really simple design. Um, she's got templates for the, the bottom of the bag and the instructions look really simple. And she sent me all of this in a package. And look at this, you guys. Can I just show you? This was the bundle that came in the mail. Pretty much pre-cut for me. I mean, I have to kind of still do a little bit of cutting and stuff, but basically it's all cut for me. Here is the drawstring. She even included the interfacing. Allison, I will test it, test sew for you anytime, my friend. And I do apologize that this isn't even complete, but I will be working on this today, this evening, and I will include that in this episode. Um, so there's going to be a little bit of a break. Um, I'll try to get it up and talk about it. So at least I'm wearing the same outfit, but that might not happen. <laughs> I may end up recording this portion, that other little portion about the bag later, and I'll add that in. But um, I can't wait to put this together. I mean, the colors are just gorgeous. Um, there's like this little meshy sort of linen fabric here for the bottom of the bag. I can't wait to sew this. The colors are gorgeous. And what I love about this is Allison picked the colors, and they're not necessarily colors I would have picked for myself. That said... I love what she chose. I absolutely, absolutely love the colors that she chose. And I like that. I like that I was sort of pushed out of my comfort zone again with color because I'm loving color these days. I absolutely love bright, beautiful colors. I just wouldn't have known what to even pick for this. So I love that the greens complement each other. There is green in the main body of the fabric here. This I assume is the lining fabric. I can't wait to put this together and take it to the beach and take pictures of it on the beach. So Allison, this will be done very, very soon, my friend. Thank you so much for your patience. I, again, apologize it took me so long, but this will be in this episode. So there we go. Hi, guys. So I finished the bag. I worked on it Monday night. It's all done. I absolutely love it. And... Here it is. Isn't this absolutely beautiful? Oh my gosh, it is such a great size. I love the rounded bottom. And, okay, okay I'll hold on, one thing at a time. <laughs> I'm so excited about this bag. So this is the Beachcomber. I've got the pattern right here. This is the Beachcomber bag by Allison Williams of Daisy Lane Design. And this is her large, so this one back here, this is the large size bag, and it is an incredible size. There's different options for the back, for the bottom of the bag. There's a mesh option for the small size. Um, there's a different option for the medium size as well as, and this is the large. It has the um, casing here, uh, the channel for the cord. It's just, it's, it's such a great design. It really is, and I, even though I've sewn quite a bit, I've not ever sewn in a rounded bottom bag or made a bag with a rounded bottom. And I, 
I was a little hesitant. I kept thinking, oh gosh, I have to be doing this wrong because I was getting like little tucks and folds. Um, but I contacted Allison. She said that is absolutely 100% right. And, and you know what? I really didn't mind. I really like it. I think it adds a really beautiful charm to the bag. It's really wonderful. So here is the lining. It's my lining fabric. It's and I, right now it's housing. I decided to put my um, scrappy shawl in here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it out because I really want you to see the inside. So hang on a second. Lots of dumping. Hang on. Oh, there's, there's more in the bag. <laughs> so here's the inside of the bag. It is so clean and awesome. And what I love about the bag too is. Whenever I've made bags, the lining, you usually leave an opening in the bottom of the lining so that you can turn the bag right side out. And with this particular design, that opening is on the side, is in the seam on the side of the bag. And I think it's great because you really don't see it at all. Not that it was really obvious with it on the bottom, but I don't know, it's just a design feature as a sewer. It's just or sewist. What, what? Okay, opinions for a moment. Which word do you makers use? Are you a sewer or are you a sewist? Let me know in the comments down below because I never know which one to use. Um, but as a bag maker myself, I've tried many different patterns and I really like that side seam feature for turning the bag inside out. So here it is again. This is the Beachcomber bag by Allison Williams and this size, you bear with me one second because I know that question may come up. The large size um, finishes at about, bear with me again for one second. I'm going to find it. Okay. The large size finishes at about, I think I'd say about maybe 8 by 10 for this bag. Um, it's just really awesome. I may be off by an inch or so, but you know what? It's a great size bag. It really, really is. I absolutely love it. Uh, I know that it, Allison is still working on the pattern, but it will be available very soon. So people, if you want the bag, stay tuned. Please go and follow Allison. She is, and I'll put that right down here. She is Daisy Lane Design on Instagram. Uh, so yeah, if you follow her, turn on notifications and you will find out when this gorgeous bag will be released. There is also interfacing on the side, which makes the bag stand up perfectly. Right now, there's nothing in it. There's nothing in this bag. It's empty and it stands up perfectly. It can also roll down if you needed to do that. Excuse me, it rolls down perfectly. And there you go. It's, again, I keep going on and on about the size because I have made drawstring bags and sometimes, especially when you've got like a, even a single project or, you know, one or two skein project, sometimes you need just a little bit more height because all your yarn's on the bottom and then you put your project in and you almost have to scrunch the project down into the bag to get it to close. But this, with this bag and the height, you have all of this extra room and it is so easy to put together. Really, really beginner friendly. So... The Beachcomber Bag by Allison Williams, Daisy Lane Design. Go and check it out, everybody. It's a beauty. I absolutely love it. Um, so that is it for knitting and sewing. What I did want to talk about is two more things. I mentioned podcasts earlier, and I have just discovered, I know this is going to be old news to many of you, and I've known about the podcast for a really long time. Um, maybe this is a new segment. I don't want to call it podcast love. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but I want to talk about podcasts a little bit more, other podcasts more. Um, podcasts that I watch, that I've been turned on to. There's so many out there, and there's so many amazing ones out there. I think they're all amazing. And... But some are definitely, they kind of stand out maybe a little bit more than others. And this particular one, the reason I watched it is because single, a single strand, hold on a second, let me put this back up. Um, a single strand studio was mentioned on this podcast and Carol posted about it on Instagram. So I said, well, you know what, let me just, 
I want to hear what they have to say about this this little her notions pouch. Um, so I went over and I watched, and it is the Bakery Bears podcast with Kay and Dan, I believe Jones. Again, I'll put that down here, and everything will be linked below. Um, they're incredible. I believe it's a husband and wife. I watched their most recent episode, which is episode 102. And I think I stayed up one night till almost 12.30 because I couldn't turn it off. It was so amazing. I They're from England. That's catch. That's hook number one because anyone with an English accent, they could read a grocery list and I'd be riveted because I just love that accent so much. I swear I was... I lived in England in a past life. Not that I really believe in past lives, but I'm. It's amazing to me that I can be so feel so attached to a country that I have really no direct affiliation with in any way. Um, of course, I watched the royal wedding. Did you guys watch the royal wedding? Just beautiful. I won't go into all of that here, but I got up with my daughter, and I don't think I've missed. I think I've seen every royal royal wedding since Diana, Prince Charles, and Lady Diana, which was 1980, maybe. So I was about. 10 years old? Yes, I just told you how old I am. <laughs> um, and I got up really early. I, Kira knew that it was the, the wedding was going to be happening. Um, she'd seen it on TV, little bits and pieces of it uh, on TV. And she got up with me really early in the morning and the two of us were snuggled on the couch together under a blanket and we were watching and we're sipping tea. It was magic. I don't know what I enjoyed more, just snuggle, being snuggled with her and how excited she was getting watching and watching the wedding itself, but it was just stunning. I loved everything about it. I loved the message. I loved the dress. I loved everything about it. So yeah, but I remember where I was going with that. Um, I was talking about English accents. So Kay, and to listen to their voices is just amazing. And again, I think it's Dan. I think it's Dan. Um, he has a voice that is so, I couldn't stop listening. And in this particular episode, they do segments about history and about different locations, places to knit in and around England. And this particular, I think they were at Aden Castle in Scotland. I think it was Scotland. I was riveted. I was riveted. They talked about Braveheart, which I love that movie, and Robert the Bruce, and about um, the the English king and, and and a Scottish king and how it all came to play, it came about, and how Engl how Scotland became its own country, and how where the name Scotland came from, and they even went into where the name Butler came from, the Pantler and the Butler. If you've watched the episode, you gotta go check it out. I anything about history. I'm riveted to. And then when you have history about a country that I absolutely love, and then they're talking knitting at the same time, oh, <laughs> couldn't stop watching. They're up to 100, episode 102, and I, I really, I don't know how many of the back episodes I'm gonna get through, but I plan on watching quite a few. I can't wait to go back and watch episode 101, because there's a lot of references in a different castle that they went to. I, I just, love that podcast so much and I had tried to watch it I mean, almost two years ago um, and for some reason it didn't grab me at the time I don't know why but it just didn't really suck me in and I started watching uh, the knitting expat Mina Phillips and still watch her podcast and um, loved her and I found other podcasts because of her recommendations but I didn't go back to the bakery bears and then there I follow them on Instagram and their feeds are just amazing and I've been getting into their cows and different things that they're doing and again because of this project bag I went and watched episode 102 I'm hooked I'm absolutely hooked so if you have a chance to catch the episode please go and watch you will not be disappointed if you love history you may find it dry as watching paint dry I don't know but it may not be your thing and I know that's that's one of the beauties of having so many podcasts out there, you will find one that works for you. You will find one ones that work for you that you absolutely love. Um, this one is, this is way up on my list right now. Absolutely love it. So that is the Bakery Bears podcast, Kay and Dan, Don, Dan, oh God, I really should pause and look it up, but I'll put it down here. So I, that's why we can edit and add things down below. <laughs>
Um, so go and check that out. Absolutely love it. Uh, and I think I've got one more thing for you and then I'm done. One more segment that I wanted to talk about and I'm going to be doing this over the summer is I love audiobooks. Um, I absolutely love audiobooks. I listen to them a lot. I don't have the time to sit with a book. Um, usually when I sit like that, if I'm sitting, I'm knitting, and that is a hashtag on Instagram. Um, there's something about, it's a guilty pleasure to sit there with a book and just casually flip pages and read, but I feel no guilt whatsoever if I'm listening to an audiobook and folding laundry or cooking dinner or, you know, I'm in the car to and from school. Uh, if I'm going to get the kids, I don't listen while they're in the car with me. Um, but I love a really good audiobook, and uh, right now I'm listening to A Stash of One's Own by Clara Parks. It is so amazing. There's different narrators doing the different stories and the different voices behind the stories. Um, and there was one story by Franklin Habit, and I'll put his information here too because I'm completely blanking right now on... Um, He's a teacher, he's an incredible knitter, he's a teacher, he's a knitter, he's amazing, um, so stylish, he is, just has his own world and it's amazing to look into it. And um, But he contributed a story to the book and I was listening really late one night and it was so amazing. I'm actually gonna get teary because it was so beautiful and emotional and so touching. So if you have a chance to listen or to buy the book, I own the physical copy of the book, um, but I'm listening to the audiobook and it's just amazing. So that is my recommendation. Uh, my first recommendation for my audiobook segment. I, d I don't have names for these segments yet, but maybe I'll put them in if I can think of them while I'm editing. Um, so check that out. And I also just sampled another audiobook um, from that was suggested in the post on Instagram about introverts and knitting and knitters and I'm gonna put all that information here too because again I don't remember which excuse me which I just cracked my knuckle sorry about that about um, which feed that was on I tagged it um, I put it in a um, I tagged the post so I would keep the post so I'd remember um, but the book that was recommended is called quiet I'm blanking on the author but again I'll put that down here for you um, and I listened to a sample of it on I listened to my audiobooks via audible and the sample was amazing and the quote that was in the Instagram post really hooked me in and, and again listening to the sample was really really great too so that is going to be my other audiobook I'm going to download that um, today or tomorrow and start listening the sample was amazing so that is my podcast suggestion bakery bears podcast my two audiobooks a stash of one's own and quiet and i just wanted to share a little bit more with you just pull you into just some other things in life that i'm doing um things are very different in the summer we're outdoors more we're on the beach the kids are playing so i can have an audiobook in and listen while they're playing on the beach so i just wanted to share that with you so i think that that is that's a lot, you guys. <laughs> this episode is really long. Um, I think that's all I have. Um, thank you so much for your patience with my very long hiatus. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so happy that you stuck with me um, and made it to the end with me. I hope that you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. Please leave a comment down below. At, you know I love hearing from people, and I'm pretty good with replying. Um, like I said, I'm only a couple of comments behind. Um, but I do read them all. I love reading them. Feel free to email me. Um, thumbs up. Subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's just been... I'm glad to be back. I'm so, so glad to be back. Hopefully the next episode will be quick. Um, I will be inserting um, some of the sewing footage uh, and the bag a little bit later. I'm not quite sure where, but that will be in there. Um, and I hope you all had a re happy Father's Day. I didn't throw that out there either. Happy Father's Day to all of the dads. If you are a knitting dad, then happy Father's Day even just a little bit more. <laughs> um, I hope everyone is just enjoying the end of the school year and the beginning of summer. And I will see you all again really soon.
Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. You're all the best. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Everybody smile! Bye. <laughs>